So, welcome to Leicester Tigers. Uh, how does it feel to be a Tigers player? Yeah, so cool. Um, I think like from the moment we signed, I think I just felt like a part of a family, um, which is not unheard of in rugby. I think it's quite a common thing, but it's just a different feeling. Um, and as soon as I'd done or met anyone or, you know, came down to training for the first time, um, I just was welcomed with open arms. And I think <clears throat> I did um, a little um, like appearance at one of the store openings and, you know, the fans were just so just welcoming. They just wanted to ask about me and um, they were as interested in the women as they were as the men, which is such a big thing. Um, and they were so excited about all the double headers that are coming up this season. Um, so, yeah, I've been welcomed with open arms and it's just been such a nice feeling. That's fantastic. Uh, going right back to the start and something you touched on just then about being welcomed with open arms. Uh, obviously, your introduction to sport uh, at a high level was your athletics. Mm. Uh, you said in interviews since that you didn't enjoy the individual aspect and you enjoy the very team oriented environment that rugby brings. Could you expand any more on that? Yeah, I think I didn't realise that I enjoyed the team aspect so much until I was back in it. Um, you know, at school you try different sports and things and you kind of, I, I don't think I'd appreciated that it was the fact that I was with other people and, you know, we were all working towards a common goal that was so important to me. So doing athletics for so long, I was just used to being on my own, training on my own, doing everything for myself. And I think it got to the point where that wasn't really enough. Like I wanted a bit more of a bigger purpose. Um, and you get that from being in rugby and being in a team sport. So, you know, you wake up one day and you're thinking, oh, I really, really can't be bothered to go to training today. Like, everyone has those days where you're feeling demotivated, but the the thought of, okay, if I don't do it today, I'm going to let my teammates down. It's like a bigger purpose, you know, what you do, everything you do affects your teammates. Um, and those, those that are putting in all the time and effort um, to, I guess, create a setup for you and give you these opportunities. So I think that's like a massive thing as well, just the social aspects. Like some of my best, best friends now are my teammates, which is crazy to me because I think in athletics, you do have that to a certain extent. But again, a lot of the people that you're training with are your competitors. So it's really hard to sort of like, <laughs> you don't really know who's genuine and who's not. Um, and don't get me wrong, I've got some real close friends from athletics. Um, but again, I have the same in, in rugby and I think it comes more, um, more often. Bro, what uh, was it that made you want to try rugby in the first place? I was brought up in Twickenham, so I've always been from a big sporty family and um, my brother played rugby and I always used to go and watch his games and um, he's a lot older than me 11 years older so um, it wasn't necessarily him playing that made me want to play but it gave me a bit of a taster for what it was about and when I was at school we played rugby league for some reason even though we were in Twickenham um, but they they yeah um, let us play rugby league and it, it was great and the, the girls got stuck in we were actually a really good team for a school team um, and we went out to up north to play and things and I just I loved it um, and then I was always an athlete like athletics was almost my thing so although I did it at school it was never going to be okay I'm going to play this outside of school until I got to uni and then I uh, just can't kind of fallen out of love with athletics a bit so my friend um she just said see why don't you try it see if you still still love it as much as you did when you were at school and I went down to my first training session, it was a Bucks training session at Loughborough and I absolutely loved it and that was where Vicky McQueen was, um, she was at my first training session and I think she saw something in me, I was just an athlete, I had no clue, no skill set, no hand-eye coordination at all and <laughs> she, I don't know, she saw something in me um, and yeah, I just loved it from that moment. Uh, you couldn't really have picked, in my opinion, a more perfect uh, athletic discipline to cross over from than the heptathlon because it's such a varied uh, set of events that you have to be that you have to be good at, but it also provides you with the perfect mindset for a you know a full eighty minute game like rugby in that even if you're not right at the top immediately you still have to be in the right headspace to continue to want to succeed. Yeah. Have you found a lot of crossover between the two? 
Definitely. And it's something, again, that I thought of like pretty straight away when I started playing. Like it's so similar in that you have, especially in sevens, that you have, um, well, yeah, you can play up to six games over a weekend in the heptathlon it's seven events over two days and it's really similar you have to get yourself up for an event and then you have to chill out again ready and you know prep for the next event and if something goes wrong you then have to have the mindset to be able to put that to bed and move on to the next thing which is so so important in sevens especially but in 15s as well in terms of you know you might have a really a really bad moment in a game um and then you have to just think, okay, next job, what's my next job here? Like, how can I move on quickly? So I think I was probably quite lucky in the sense that I'd already had that mindset coming from heptathlon. I think it set me up pretty well. And then you spoke about coming into rugby and you were, even when Vicky saw something in you, you felt like your skill set was still something that you needed to build on. Often in rugby, you find that players uh, play the game from a very young age and then it's all about building up in the gym their athletic yeah. performance whereas you were the opposite you're coming in with an exceptional athletic background so what key areas of rugby did you first look to master coming in at a later at a later age so i was really really lucky and that i got picked up by the sevens development program pretty much straight away um, James Bailey, he was the sevens head coach at the time and he just took a chance on me and brought me in and I think that you're right, he saw the athleticism in me and thought, okay, we can make you into a rugby player. Um, the main thing, like genuinely, I couldn't catch a ball. Like my hand-eye coordination was shocking and the girls will vouch for this. <laughs> and I get absolutely ripped about it all the time. But um, yeah, like I've, ne I've never had to run like off line like ever I always run in a straight line I never had to catch a ball or do anything all I had to do was like run or throw you know it's yeah. just so different so, very singular events yeah whereas now everything has everything to be all ties together yeah. yeah um and it's just there's so many just simple things like just, people used to say to me oh just run a line and I was like what like, what, what does that mean? Like, it's, an, it's so alien to so many people. And, you know, now I think back to it, and I'm like, oh, God, like, it makes me cringe because I didn't have a clue. <laughs> I must have felt, like, looked so out of place. But I just loved it. That's all I knew. But, yeah, I think, like, genuinely, just the, the basics were, were key at the beginning. And, you know, as soon as I learned to catch, like, I was flying down the wing, which is all they wanted me to do, really. So, yeah, it, <laughs> we got there in the end. <laughs> Was there anything specific, uh, like training wise, for people who are looking to improve on the field that you know you that you did to be able to you know like you know hit specific lines or you know even just something as simple as catching? Was it just literally just taking the ball over and over and over and over again? Yeah, I did a lot. I did a lot sort of outside of the training um, sessions, like on my own with one to ones with coaches with players. Just a lot of hand-eye coordination stuff, people throwing balls at me, balls that are off centre, all of those different things. Um, and yeah, it, it, it took time, but you know, the more you do it, like anything, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, and even now, like I'm not the most skillful player, but I know that's not that's not what I'm in the team for. Like that's not what I bring. We have players that are so skillful, um, but my, I'm more about my athleticism, the size of me, my pace, all of those things um, that come together. But yeah, I definitely think that mindset is a massive thing, and you know, just the commitment to training and wanting to be better. Anyone can be better if they they put the time into it. And I think at the end of the day, it, yeah, if you want it enough, you can make it happen. Bro, uh, the jump from, as you touched on, university rugby straight into a sevens programme. Uh, how did you find that going into that uh, ultra competitive environment, as yeah. I imagine sevens is? It must, yeah. Yeah. So because it was quite a quick turnaround in terms of, like, I literally went to my first training session. I played, I think, maybe a week or two after that. And then it was... Um, maybe even a month after that, that I was then brought into my first development, seventh development trial. So it's all so fast. Um, but I think because I'd been competing at quite a high level in athletics, I already had that sort of professionalism and I kind of understood that side of things. So I already knew how to, in a way, look after my body. Like, yes, I was obviously a lot younger and naive. And there were things, again, like in a team sport, you just have to be so much more considerate 
of others and I well, I remember having a bit of like a reality check when I came in thinking oh my god like okay I've actually got to like <laughs> think about these like how I'm behaving is affecting these other people like you don't have to do that in athletics everyone is just there for themselves and um there were just a few like little things you know just like about just simple things like being on time you know um just the, just so many like basic things that I look back now and I think oh my god it, it honestly makes me cringe so I'm like if I saw someone else coming into like a setup now and, and probably behaving how I did when I first came in it would just yeah just be like oh god but yeah I think in terms of the actual professionalism of what I did and like my training and everything that was all there it was more just learning about how to like yeah be in like a team sport and then similarly uh after you'd uh done some sevens you also started playing for wasps as well you spent mm -hmm. some years at wasps how was it jumping from the sevens environment for, from a university environment straight into sevens then into 15s yeah so that was strange because i'd only played 15s a little bit in my first year and um, i was sort of in sevens and then i played in the first year of the um the premiership at the time or the new premiership um for lightning and that was great but again I was such a baby I was so new to the sport um and a sevens is so so different um and I think I didn't really appreciate that so when I went back to playing 15s um after the pandemic it was a bit of a shock to the system I kind of thought you know like I'll be able to get back into this team and I'll be able to perform well but actually it's like having so many defenders on the pitch it sounds so stupid and so simple but like I really thrive like in space and I'm my physical attributes again are what, what it is my game um, and not being able to sort of use my speed all the time and not having the ball in my hands all the time um, just was so like so different but again like learned to love it and I played I think the majority of that season for Wasps and I loved it by the end um, and yeah it, I think it was good being able to have a bit of a balance and, and doing both which is obviously what I'm able to do now which is nice. Uh, how was, uh, I mean there's been lots of uh, interviews with you about this but Talk to me about the Olympics. It must have just been incredible. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. It was such a surreal experience. And like, even when I think about it now, I just can't believe that I actually have been to the Olympics. Like, it's crazy. Um, but, yeah, I think it's always, it's always been my dream. Like, that work growing up, I was like, I want to go to the Olympics. I'd always, always said it. And I had this thing in my mind. Like, I knew I was going to do it. Initially, I thought it was going to be for athletics. And then, obviously, transferring over to rugby and being able to make that happen was amazing um, obviously it was different because it was in covid so we weren't allowed spectators which is is very different to how i'd imagined it like being in my mind like i imagined my whole family being there and all of those things but um it was still like it was still incredible um and you, you can't even explain it. It's just bigger and better than you would ever really think. The village is just crazy. The food hall is the biggest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> like, it's absolutely wild. And there's just people walking around, you know, these, like, incredible, famous athletes. And you're just like, wow, like, how am I here? And you're here. Like, Andy Murray was in our accommodation just strolling around, like, chatting to us. And I was just like, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh you can say no to this, of course, but have you got an eye on Paris 2024? Yes, yeah, I do. So I've had a rough couple of years, actually, since the Olympics with injury. So I did uh, my left ACL in 2021, came back, uh, played for six months and then dislocated my right knee and did my ACL again on my right hand side. So I'm still coming back from that injury now and it's been tough. So I'm kind of trying to take the pressure off. Um, thinking too much too far ahead um, but Paris is like it's been my dream since we got back from Tokyo really so um, I'm still pushing towards it I'm trying to take like I said like each step as it comes um, but I'm hoping yeah hoping to be back playing soon and you know pushing towards yeah that goal. Brilliant and then you touched on your injury there uh, how is the rehab going at the moment how is your, the, the program? Yeah, it's been going well. Um, I had a bit of a setback in June. I had to have another operation to get some of the metal work taken out, which is, yeah, it was very frustrating at the time because, you know, you rehab is never linear, but 
you always want it to be. Um, so having that setback was a bit frustrating and being the competitor that I am, I, they said it would take nine to 12 months. I said, okay, I'm going to do it in eight. <laughs> but it just hasn't happened that way this time, um, sadly. So yeah, it's going to be nearer a year um, by the time that I'm back, hopefully back playing. But um, yeah, I'm confident that I should be getting back to where I, where I was before. It might take a bit of time, but yeah, I just want to get back on the pitch now. I miss it. <laughs> well, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to seeing you run out at Matilda Woods Welford Road. How excited are you to run out for the first time in Tigers colours? Yeah, I'm so excited. I think it'll be real cool. I've had so much support from all the staff, all the players and everyone here. Everyone's been so understanding with my situation, not being able to be in training too much, obviously with my injury and things, but it's been so nice to be around the girls and you know, be able to help out in other ways um, and do a bit of skills and stuff. And I'm just really excited. It just seems like such a good cl club to be a part of. I know we've already sold, I think, over 5,000 season tickets, which is crazy. And I feel like unheard of in the women's game. So I'm absolutely buzzing. I can't wait. Um, yeah, I can't wait to play. Brilliant. And then one final one. Uh, it's a Saturday afternoon. You're curled up on the sofa. You've got the rugby on the TV. Yeah. What is your snack and drink of choice? Oh, I love strawberry pencils. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, like the sweet. The, the fizzy ones or um, just the, not, the, the ones with like the white like tube. Mm, yeah, love yes. them. Um, and drink. Probably just like a from blackcurrant squash. <laughs> Classic. Any sticker brand, Robinsons? <laughs> no, not Robinsons. Robinsons, you have to put too much in. You have to, it's too yeah. much to dilute. Just like the cheap one for me. It's great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much. This has been fab.